Star, a resource on high demand for builders. Once you start decorating your place to the next level with dark wood beams and for example shingle roof elements. Normally, tar pits only have a nice initial yield when clearing the growths, grabbing the extra tar around it, but I found a great way to exploit their respawn points and farm all the tar you will ever need with a super efficient design for the Mistlands update. Hey, what's up guys? It's your man Foriam again, back with a new guide for Valheim, in which I'm going to show you the build for my effective tar farm, so let's get right to it. All right, so what we're gonna do first is search for a nice plains with preferably as much tar pits in it as possible, as the more you will have in this area, the more efficient you can make this farm. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to link these bad boys with each other, but let's first talk about the basics. So once you've located a tar pit, the first thing you wanna do is take out all the growths. These nasty little creatures can deal a lot of damage, so I definitely recommend you to take out a ranged weapon to snipe them down from a distance. When they're unaware, you can basically one-shot them, while alerted, they only require two bolts. After you've cleared the entire tar pit and also picked up the extra tar which is floating around, you can basically slap down a workbench and start raising the ground right here to get rid of the tar itself. I've seen many guys where people dig a trench to drain the tar pit basically, but this is totally unnecessary. The only thing you need to do is raise the ground just above the tar level basically to get rid of it and that will basically be enough to start building the farm. So once you've risen the ground a little bit and flattened the area, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. What you want to do next is place a workbench right in the middle of it so you can prevent spawning of growth in the future but once we remove this we will basically allow it again make it a lot easier to work on our farm until it's finished. The growths respawn in approximately two in-game days or exactly one hour so it can take quite some time before they pop up so what you want to do is link as many of these tar pits with each other on which we're going to repeat this process. Take out all the enemies, raise the ground, flatten the surface and then place a workbench right in the middle of it, rinse and repeat this on every single one of them. If you have a massive plains area with so many more tar pits, of course you can repeat this process for all those to make it even more efficient, but I think four is already a pretty nice number. Once you've done this for all the tar pits you want to link together for this farm, you're ready to move to the next step, which is a very important one. As right now we're going to determine the exact spawn location of the growths so we can consistently farm them. For that, you basically want to take out your hammer and have a workbench ready. We're going to quickly break this one and then place another one once the growths have spawned in, as then we'll be able to place a wooden pole one meter at the exact spawn location of the growths. You want to stay close to the growths at this time, as it will be less likely for them to move around, but also strafe to the sides to have the highest chance of not getting hit by their attacks. And then basically take them out with one shot. I recommend a blunt weapon. Place a wooden pole one meter at their exact location will be the best way to pinpoint their spawn. You only have one shot at this every hour as that's the respawn rate. So you want to make sure it counts. So let me just go into creative mode, see how I performed. As you can see, my placement was pretty accurate, but still not 100%. But after fine tuning the location of the poles, you can see that the growths spawn exactly on top of it, which is the result you're looking for. By the way, I think the best way to play Valheim and other games is with friends and I use G-Portal servers for all our roles and adventures. If you're looking to host one yourself as well, you should definitely check out my ref link in the description as not only will you get a very nice discount during checkout, but also support the channel while you're at it. Cheers! On one of the tar pits I wanted to link to my farm, I simply couldn't get the placement right of the poles or well, that is what you think at first. Sometimes the terrain is a little bit buggy or not 100% flat, for which we're gonna have to raise the ground one more time. It might be because we still have the tar lake underneath it, but this would be your fix to the problem as now, after we've flattened the area and skipped time a little bit, you can see that the growths spawn exactly on top of the poles so you no longer have the problem of them spawning right next to it. Anyways, once you've determined the spawn location for all the growths on your different tar pits, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is the construction of the kill houses, I would call them. 
What you're gonna do first is take out a wooden floor one by one. And you're gonna snap it right on top of one of the corners of the pole. Then we're gonna zoom in and place four more floors right on top of it. So you basically have five floors in total. It is very important to stick with this amount of wooden floors, five in total, as it determines the perfect height for the box so the groats cannot escape from it, while you'll be able to stand outside, take them down and farm the rewards. We're gonna repeat this process for the next pole. So we have five on both. And what we're gonna do next is take out the walls two by two and place them exactly like so. The next thing you wanna do is take out some core wood to place beams behind it. So you can basically support this construction and break the small foundation in the center. Next up, you're gonna take a wooden floor two by two to place a roof over it so the growths cannot jump outside and finish it up with a wooden wall in front of it so you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if we break the workbench, every single hour growths will spawn in the exact middle of the box so you can reap the rewards. So it's important you place one outside of the spawn area. You can determine that by the circle which is basically around it when you place it and to visit this place fast and efficiently, we're gonna place one a little bit further away from it. We're gonna build a little cottage right here in which we're gonna place the workbench as well so it's safe from harm. And at the same time, we also wanna have two portals, one linking to the beginning of the farm and also one to the next farm so we can quickly hop from one to another to take out all the growths as fast and efficient as possible. You can basically go with whatever floats your boat right here, but I think this is a nice design for a small cottage. You can use any name for the sequence of your farms, but I think it would be simple to just go with one and two to start off with. Then we're gonna move on to the next star pit and make the exact same little killing boxes. First, the five wooden floors one by one stacked up on top of each other. Then build wooden walls on the top layer, reinforce them with the core wood, break the small floors, place a big one on top as roof, and then close it up with a final wall. Then we're gonna make another cottage right outside of the spawn area, and this time we're gonna name the portals two and three, so we can hop from the first farm to this one, and the three would basically be for the next one. So yeah, you've guessed it. We're gonna make another cottage on the third farm, and there we're gonna place portals numero tres and cuatro. Then on the fourth farm, we can make our final cottage and we're gonna call this one four and return, let's say, as this would be the one which leads us back to the base. After you've finished the killing boxes as well, you should have something that looks a little bit like this on basically every single farm. So now the farm is basically done and you're ready to link it to your main base, let's say. So I'm gonna start a little portal hub right here where we're gonna place two portals. I'm gonna call my first portal one and the second return. So we can basically visit all the tar pits, take out all the growths in a short time and travel back to our main base. So now every time when the growths respawn, we can basically use these portals to quickly visit one tar pit after the other one to take out the growths and get our hands on all that tar. It will only take seconds to do this and get back to your main base to continue the building. And of course, the more tar pits you link to it, the more efficient it will become, but also a little bit more pricey regarding the resources. Anyways, there you have it. A very efficient growth tar farm to get all the tar for your building needs in Valheim. Let me know in the comments what you think of this design and if you have further questions about the game, don't hesitate to ask. If you found this one helpful, make sure to hit that like button to save it in your library for next time and also support the channel, already very much appreciated. I also made a very efficient Grey Dwarf Mistlands farm with Pufferfish earlier, as well as an effective Draugr Entrail farm. Both can be found in the top right of the screen, as well as the description with all my socials, including the Discord, if you want to check them out as well. Right now though, it is 4am out. I want to wish you an awesome day and good luck building the farm. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.